Hello, everyone. My name is Tim B. Green, and this is Crush It Club, Episode 9. Succeed more by planning to fail. Now, some people are all worried about, oh, you can't think about failure because that will attract failure through quantum causation. Well, quantum causation is nonsense. It is not science. It's superstition. Of course, I already talked about that in a previous episode, but today what we're going to talk about is while you should absolutely focus on the positive, have a plan to what you want, focus on what you want and act towards what you want, that you should ideally or to increase the probability of succeeding, to succeed more, plan to fail. That is, have a plan in place that if something goes wrong, if you are not achieving the results you want by a specified date that you choose, then you already know what to do, okay? Now, this is especially, I don't usually have a plan in place, honestly, when I'm teaching or consulting, oh, well, if they don't act this way or, or the, the consultation doesn't go this way, I'll do this. I can get away with it, mostly because I have an extensive experience with that where sort of thinking on my feet, but even better than thinking on your feet is thinking on your feet ahead of time. Now, there's a lot of research to support this. Uh, Charles Duhigg talks about if, if, when, then plans when you're trying to do something. I don't know if it was smarter, better, faster, or if it was the power of habit. But in one of those two books, he talks about it. I believe it was the first one. And he talked about essentially having a plan for continuing your habit, continuing what you wanted to do by planning what you would do if something went wrong. So you have a plan in place, an action plan for when things don't go the way you hope they do. So for example, if when I go to Costco, the giant jar of Jelly Belly Jelly Beans tempts me and I really want to buy it, then I will do all my other shopping first before considering looking at those jelly beans, before buying those jelly beans. So I'm not denying myself the jelly beans. I'm delaying getting them. And if by the end of that shopping trip, I still want them, I can have one of two rules in place. I will either say, no, I can't get it. I'll get it tomorrow. Another plan to fail. I could go, no, I still want them, but I don't think I should have them. So if after that shopping trip, at the end of shopping, I still want the jelly bellies, I will come back tomorrow to get them. Since I literally live two stations away or a 20 minute bike ride from Costco, I can do that. It makes it less convenient and therefore one more sort of barrier, one more thing to inhibit me from actually buying those jelly bellies that I will destroy the entire big giant jar in three or four days. No kidding. I just finished doing it. So there's an example of that. Now, other examples are in things like uh, in medical situations, nurses or doctors or uh, firefighters. Uh, where the best plans, uh, the best trained and the most successful in those areas where there's complex situations with a lot of unpredictability is to plan what to do if something goes not the way you want it to go, if something goes wrong. And those who do that are the most effective and the most successful. So you should do the same thing. So for example, it's January 9th. If you have a New Year's resolution, this is a great time. If you haven't already, even better than thinking on your feet if something goes wrong, is to, that's also a skill you should have, but think on your feet in advance so that really all you have to do is pull your plan out. So for example, you could say, if when I miss my workout day because my goal for this year was to lose weight, I will and then finish that sentence. So if I miss my workout day, I will make sure to put my gym bag at my front door the morning of my next workout. 
right? First thing in the morning I wake up, that's what I'll do. It'll remind me that it's there. So that's another example. So for me, what I could have and should have done but did not do in 2021 is I worked extremely hard. I put out a lot of really good content. I did a lot of quality one-to-ones, consults, relationship building. I got a lot of great work done, but it didn't result in a lot of conversions. So at the end of 2021, since I didn't have a plan in place, I, after a long search, found somebody who I decided I wanted to be my coach, who knew something I didn't. Unfortunately, a lot of self-declared coaches, if they don't know more than me about their subject of expertise, there's no good reason for me to hire them. And that's the category that a lot of coaches fit into. They're really not the experts they claim to be. But when you find one who knows something that you don't clearly, then that's a good investment. So I now have a coach who teaches me about uh, sort of the, the internet, uh, the internet marketing from the web page, mailing list, YouTube in-stream ad side, which I know nothing about. So that's my plan. This didn't work. Giving only content didn't work. Nobody spontaneously converted into a client. Now I have a plan in place for the next step, and I'm most of the way along that path. So that's a perfect example. So I don't care what it is, whether it's in your business or something else, make your plan. And as I said yesterday, a plan really consists of having a clear destination, having a clear next step. And that's really all you need if you're acting on that next step, because the data you get from that step, from doing your next step, oftentimes shows you clearly what the following step is. Without the data from it, you know, if you plan far into the future, it's basically guaranteed to fail or need to be adjusted. So you're wasting time planning for things you couldn't plan for, like COVID-19. Any of you who think you can plan five years into the future, you're naive. Because anybody who three years ago claims to be able to plan five years into the future where they would be, sure, an aspirational goal is great, but you can't control a lot of things. Anybody who did that, who tells me they had a plan in place for a worldwide pandemic, okay, well, they did something that most of us didn't. But in the real world, my guess is nobody did that. Or so few people that it's, it's irrelevant. So just make sure you have a plan in place plan to fail with your New Year's resolution as a backup plan. Again, I can't emphasize this enough. This isn't about focusing on what could go wrong. This is about focusing on what you hope to go right, but having a plan in place, an action you know you can take if it doesn't go as planned, if something about the conditions you couldn't predict or didn't predict changes. Now, this is an important point is you want to essentially make the best reasonable predictions you can of the most likely things that could go wrong or the most likely things that will prevent, prevent you from reaching that destination you're moving towards. Make plans. If my plan doesn't do this because list whatever the most probable causes of the plan not working are, or not even the, the causes, but if this plan doesn't work by X date, I will do this. And then just have a plan to pivot. Then get back to working on your plan. If there's no reason to change that plan, you shouldn't change it. Focus on your destination, adjusting towards your destination, your immediate next concrete actionable step, as I talked about yesterday, and keep moving in that direction. But having plan, a plan in your back pocket for if something fails or something changes is peace of mind. It's like thinking on your feet in advance. And there's a lot of research that really supports doing that. So that's it for Crush It Club episode nine. Succeed more by planning to fail. If you do this, you'll increase your odds of succeeding even more. My name is Tim Big Green. That's it. Bye for now.